Hey, what is going on, everybody? And welcome to the College Info Geek Podcast, the most mediocre podcast. It's not mediocre. I hope it's not. I just wanted to say that. Yeah. I just wanted to reference Mad Max. Uh, let us know in the comments if it's mediocre. Just <laughs> let, it, let us know in the comments if it's mediocre. Yeah. Now we're going to have a bunch of people typing that just because they want to. Oh, in no. All I'm going to feel bad. Look, I'm fine because... I'm, I'm not going to see No, them. we've already given ourselves an out, see? If people type mediocre in the comments, they're not actually saying the podcast is mediocre. They're just referencing a Morton Joe. So, in fact, all negative feedback is just a disguised movie reference of some sort. Okay. You know? Like, some movie character sometime throughout film's history said, that's really bad. That's a funny joke. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Yeah. See? <laughs> Every, they're in on it. Yeah. Everyone's in on it. They're laughing with us, not at us. Uh, let me open my hipster artisanal kefir culture drink that has used water that has been blessed by 800 monks and run through crystals, probably. 800 monks. That's a that's quite that's the a assembly line. Monks. I know, right? It's one at a time, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just goes on a conveyor belt, and they have to just bless everything that passes you. They can't get a congregation together to, like, en masse bless a giant vat of water, which will then be bottled, mm-hmm. every individual bottle is blessed by every individual monk, which is why it only costs nineteen ninety nine for this water. Buy it today. So I want to buy it. I think there's an there's an H three video where they test out expensive waters and there actually oh, is yeah. one there's like some... where it's water that was run over crystals. So yeah, it helps to align one. your energy or something like there's that. There's like a black water. The black water, yep. It's like it's just water. There's like this celebrity water, I think. That may be the same as the crystal water. I don't know. There's uh, yeah. a lot of really weird waters out there. Uh, I just tend to drink tap water. How blessed is that? Uh, mine comes out of the fridge. It's more blessed. It's blessed uh, that, by the fridge. That does sound more blessed than tap water. Tap water is the least blessed. Hashtag blessed water. Yeah. I'm sure like the animals in the forest bless the stream water, but who blesses the tap water? You can't fit into who the pipes. Who watches the watchman? Exactly. Yeah. Who watches the watchman? I don't watchman know that that really the... has any relevance. <laughs> All right. I, I suppose we yeah, should get the this actual is, topic of is, the episode. It's not anything yet. It's it's something. It's something. I'm actually going to set a small little timer here, maybe, uh, because we have much, much recording to do today. Much to do. Much to do. Recording videos, recording podcasts, all sorts of stuff, because I will be out of town next week. Uh, though, by the time this goes live, I will be back. I think this is going live the Monday after I return. Oh, cool. So, yeah, I guess me saying I'm on vacation isn't really all that useful. Yeah. I'm back. You're lying now. Yeah. As of this episode's published date, I'm now getting ready to go to VidCon, which, hey, if you're going to be at VidCon, uh, let me know, and I'll try to find you, or try to find me, actually. I'm not going to go try to find a bunch of people who yeah. just comment. Yeah, you've know. got a big, like, scavenger really hunt. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Jacob Smith, his little avatar picture is an anime girl. But I'm sure I can find him. Yeah. I'm sure he looks like that. Probably. And I can find him in a sea of other people who are also anime girls judging by their avatars. Anyway, uh, we're going to do an episode on how to build strong habits today. I like strong habits. I do like strong habits. Um, you know, I get questions a lot from people who are like, I really want to stick with all these goals that I have and all these habits that I want to build. But... I am not incentivized to do it, or I can't summon the motivation to do it. So what I want to talk about is, number one, what is a habit? How do you actually build it? Or conversely, break a bad one. Uh, And how do you gain the discipline or build the systems that are required to keep up with those good habits? Yeah. Um, You know, we just did a morning routines episode, so that might be a decent place to focus our attention yeah, well, that's, time. that's pretty much my primary habit is morning, the morning routines. Routine, which itself is filled with habits. Yep. Habits within habits. It's habits all the way down. So um, I took notes a while ago on Charles Duhigg's The, uh, the Power of Habit. Okay. It's one of my favorite nonfiction books. And, you know, the video that came out last week as of the publishing date of this episode, the one on books. It's getting confusing. I know, right? We're like talking temporally. Uh, it has a couple of recommendations to book summary and notes pages on people's websites. Specifically, Derek Sivers has a very good book summaries page on his website. And uh, Nat Eliason has a very good one on his. 
And for a long time, people have asked me to publish my book notes for Power of Habit, and I think I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna put it on my personal site. That's okay. probably a pretty good place to put book notes. So yeah, check out the show notes for this episode, and I should hopefully have the uh, book notes that I took four years ago for The Power of Habit. But let's start out this episode by talking simply about what a habit consists of. So it's routinized behavior, right? So it's yeah. it's behavior that takes a lot less conscious effort and conscious thought to do. And habits are actually very useful because they ensure that we don't have to make a conscious decision about every single thing we do in life, which is you know pretty good because then we can use the rest of our brain power on other things like slaying monsters and Monster Hunter. Yeah, the only way we've That's been it. able to progress as civilization is by taking things that once took conscious thought and making them easy. Mm -hmm. So um, in the book, Power of Habit, he talks about the habit loop, essentially. So every habit consists of three main parts, uh, the cue, the routine, the reward. So a cue is anything in your environment. Maybe it could be the time of day. Maybe it could be the fact that you you know see something or it could be a person. Uh, it basically cues this desire in your brain to want a specific reward. And then there is a routine, the behavior you go through to get the reward. And finally, there is that reward. So that's like the habit loop. Um, and there is a fourth component to the habit loop after you go through this loop uh, several times, which he uh, outlines as craving. So the moment you are exposed to the cue, your brain now craves the reward. And... Um, there was this really interesting study that was done with this monkey named Juli Julio, I think. Okay. That's with a J, it's Julio, right? What's up, Julio? Julio, my Julio favorite the monkey. monkey. Yeah. So this is where they discovered the whole anticipation and craving thing. Uh, basically, Julio was able to get some blackberry juice when he would pull a lever uh, when a certain shape showed up on a screen. So it's like a square showed up on the screen. He's like, ooh, I can pull a lever and I can get blackberry juice. Nice. So pulling the lever would have been the routine. Now, at first... They're monitoring his brain activity, and at first, this spike in brain activity would happen when he got the blackberry juice. It was the, I got the reward, brain spike. Yeah. But eventually, as that habit loop solidified, the brain activity actually spiked right before he had pulled the loop. It was right after the shape showed up on the screen. So instead of that dopamine spike coming after the reward was gotten, it came in anticipation of the reward. So as habits are solidified, whether they be good or they be bad. And I suppose good and bad are objective or a subjective man. Yeah. It's all your opinion, man. There's this craving that starts to manifest itself. So um, when you want to break a bad habit, you have to deal with fighting against that craving. And when you want to build a good habit, you want to hopefully get that into your life, get some sort of craving for some reward that you want that causes you to do the healthy behavior. Yeah. So, and there was actually some really interesting studies and in, in, in case studies in the book. For instance, when Febreze first came out, it was marketed as like this odorless substance that would just get rid of bad smells, but it didn't do well. So then they added the fresh scent to it. I don't know whatever that scent is, but then it became very successful because it kind of established that habit loop with a craving for the fresh scent. So it was more like, mm. okay, the reward people want, I guess they do technically want the bad smell to go away, but what they really want is a fresh scent. And yeah. that's why they buy Febreze. Okay. And there's a lot more stuff in the book about, um, you know, understanding what the reward is. And I think this is the first thing. So I do want to talk about building good habits. I think I want to make that the focus of this episode. But one thing that is important to note regarding breaking bad habits um, it's what he calls the golden rule of habit change. You can't really destroy a habit very easily, but you can change it by replacing the routine to get the reward in a healthier way. And the first thing, or the first step to doing that is to figure out what exactly is the reward I'm getting or what are the components of this reward? So say you're a smoker, you're gonna get like a nicotine rush, but you're also getting maybe a break from work you're getting the ability to go converse with some friends outside. You're getting, you know, just some time to yourself. So, or you're getting maybe like a rush. What if you could replace the behavior and get some of those things? Now you're not gonna get a nicotine rush from like going and doing a workout, but you are gonna get a break from work. You're gonna get a rush of energy. 
You're going to get maybe some time to go socialize with people in the gym. So that could be like a good behavior that might replace the bad behavior and give you a somewhat similar reward. Yeah. So that's the whole idea is like, if you want to change your habits, you need to uh, replace that routine to get a similar so reward. You're trying to make your current habit work with you rather yes. than straight up fighting it. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, just changing the behavior, getting the same uh, reward. Um, now, I can't remember if the book talks about this so much, but I think that if you also want to break a bad habit, you can remove the cue or make the routine so difficult to do that you're not going to do it. And I mean, this is well established. Like if you want to stop eating junk food, you got to have, you got to take all the junk food out of your house. Because then when you get the craving, you can't satisfy it. Yeah. There's just no junk food there. You know, so I think that's the biggest thing is like eventually over time, when you're not able to get that sugar rush you crave, eventually that's going to fade. Maybe it won't go away forever. Maybe you can't, you know, do this for a month and then put all the junk food back in your house and be perfectly vigilant and never eat it again. But it's effective nonetheless. So that's just some preliminary stuff about how to break the bad habits. Um, what are your thoughts on, on forging new productive ones that require effort, though, such as establishing a morning routine? Okay, so I think that if you're going to try to establish a new habit, one, you do want to figure out what, what is your cue? What is your cue? So the morning routine, I like the morning routine. Mm -hmm. The idea of it works well with me because the cue is obviously, well, I'm up now. It happens immediately and not much can interrupt that habit. That block of time, if I'm doing whatever it is I'm trying to do early enough, cannot be interrupted by other people. Right. So it's more consistent. And so having a consistent time of day or an activity where you know you aren't going to have weird things come up very often to break your new habit you're building, that's going to be useful. So that's why I prefer the morning. So and making time for it is the first thing. Yeah. And it's got to be it's got to be a good consistent time. If I tried to make a habit, let's say for if I wanted to I'll read after lunch every day. Right now, lunch for me isn't at a normal time. It's yeah. not at a regular time. And maybe we're filming something. Maybe something comes up frequently enough that it would be very hard for me to get enough days in a row to really build a habit. But if right. I'm doing stuff at like 6 in the morning, nobody is talking to me. Mm -hmm. I, will, I can guarantee you that time is mine, except for in rare circumstances where I can't keep it up. Yeah. So find whatever time works for you and or whatever cue works for you. And I would say also to, one, not try too many things at once. So if you want to start a new morning routine and you've decided it's going to have 15 things in it, no. <laughs> it's Don't, not going to work. If you feel yourself, if you're forcing it every time, if you force every single minute step, it's just going to be terrible and mm -hmm. you'll, you're eventually going to fall apart at the first chance. But also... And this is something I did uh, more recently. Uh, when I wanted to put language practice and reading into my morning routine, my first thought, my big motivated thought was like, whoa, I bet an hour of language practice and an hour of reading would be so cool. I've done that before. That's feasible. Yeah. But I've made this mistake before. So the answer was, I'm only going to put down here in my little morning routine half of whatever I think sounds reasonable. Oh, that's good. Because okay. I'm wrong. Yeah. And a half hour is much better than when I succeed at the hour four times. And then on the fifth time, I freak out because it's too much and nothing's working. Yeah. It has to be small enough and consistent enough that you can keep doing it because consistency is far more important than the quantity or quality of whatever you're doing on any given day. This is interesting. So this is like a rewriting of the fudge ratio thing. You know, the whole idea of if you, you think something's going to take an hour, you should double it. Yeah. Because it'll probably take you two hours. Yeah. And this is like having it or from a different perspective, you could say, all right, how many days is it going to take me to do an hour of language practice? I think I could do it in one, let's say two. So yeah, I'm like, I'm like flipping that Yeah, because an hour sounded reasonable. I was like, I've done that before right. for small amounts of time, but that takes too much time. It is not sustainable enough. It's easy for that to be interrupted when I require so much time for a morning routine. Mm -hmm. And if I'm interrupted, you break the habit because habits are about the long con. Yeah. We don't care how much we get done this week. That doesn't matter. If this is a true habit, you build on it for weeks and months and that's where the good stuff comes. And you can increase it then maybe, you yeah. know, you build the habit, then you can say, I'm going to do 10 minutes more. 
But if you start big, you will fail quickly. I like how you said the long con. Yeah, it's the long con. You're conning, <laughs> conning your, your you're brain. conning your brain into doing something smart. Human brains don't want to be smart. We want to nah. eat Twinkies and watch TV. It's true. Human That's brains easy. are stupid. We yeah. need to trick them into smart things. My brain just wants salty snacks and safety and rest. Yeah. That's all I want. Okay, well, a couple of those are pretty <laughs> smart. But but in order to do more productive, yeah, they're pretty bad whatever that run, means, though. things. Like too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that reminds me of the whole concept of um, success spirals, which comes from a book called The Motivation Hacker, which uh, this is one of those books where the book itself is not like the greatest book ever. Like most of the book is just- not like refined literature. It's not refined literature. And it's not like every single sentence of the book gave me something that I could take away and go improve my life with. A lot of it is him talking about how he went about tackling all these huge goals. But- it's one of those books where I took something very important away from it. And that was the concept of success spirals, where you start really small. And as you, you know, prove to yourself that you can do what you set out to do in a small capacity, you can then sort of spiral up and add more difficult things or add more habits or, you know, move from 15 minutes of language practice to 30 minutes of language practice. But then crucially, if you fall off for some reason, and it's not like a one time fall off you know, but it's like you, you fell off for like a couple of months and now you're trying to get it back. You can't just immediately jump back to that higher place you were at in the past. You kind of have to go back down again. Just like if I stop going to the gym for three months, I'm not going to be able to walk in there and bench 200 pounds again. I'm probably going to have to go back down to 175 and work my way back. Now, the great thing is it's going to take less time than I think, and it's going to take far less time than I took me to initially build the strength, and, you know, the first time ever, but you can't just walk in and be immediately where you were. Yeah. And, that, and it's the same thing with your brain and your habits. That happened to me recently because when I, I was traveling for like two weeks, I didn't mm. work out at all. I had no morning routine. It was all destroyed, even though before that I had had it for quite a while. Yeah. And then now I've basically got a simplified version of the same thing where I was like, yeah, it turns out that not working out for two or three weeks, I can't just go back to my ideal numbers that I was doing. That's nope. unrealistic. So just accept that you need to start from scratch. I think we, we cling too much to past levels of success or past visions of what we wanted to be success. And then we're unwilling to accept this is the realistic number that gets you started today. Right. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious. So when you came back from that travel, where did you have to start again with your workout routines? I'm guessing it wasn't at rock bottom. No. Um, so to, to help me build the habit back again, like I was doing maybe 24 pull-ups. Okay. And when I came back, I was so exhausted and so like everything was messed up that I was just like, you know, I'm just going to go back to 10. Worst case scenario, it takes me another week and a half to get back. Oh, no, not a week and a half. The point yeah. is I'm exercising more or less forever. Yep. You know, so if a week and a half of it's easy now, remember, now you have to do things. We're not on vacation. Then then a week and a half is a good amount of time to do that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm just going to be like, I'm not doing all of these pull-ups at once is now <laughs> far too annoying. You having fun with that? <laughs> it's it's lemon cayenne. Oh. I love it, but occasionally like some of the cayenne nice. gets in the back of my throat. <laughs> okay. Well, Tom's going to die on this podcast, but... It yeah, hasn't I, killed me yet. I more or less cut it in half. Yeah. And just everything is in half. Stop pretending the numbers were the important thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. And I've learned that uh, when you're a really busy person, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a student that has a ton of homework at the end of the night after school, you can't set up this super idealized schedule that would maybe work for you on like a Saturday and then expect yourself to do it all day long. It's kind of like when you and I did those pick four journals where yeah. you pick four goals and you're like, all right, you got to work on every single one of these every day for three months. It doesn't work if you're super overloaded with homework on some night. Yeah, so three of them are to... like, oh, I I read like an article on the yeah. topic. It took 30 seconds. That's enough for today. That's all I have time for. Yep. That's why I have like do some sort of exercise on my habit list and I have – like read for 20 minutes, but listening to an audiobook is totally fine because, okay, well, if I'm really pressed for time on a certain day, I will go for a 20 minute bike ride with my audiobook. 
kill two birds with yeah. one stone, and I've done them both. That is a you really, know? really important strategy, I think, is having a fallback. When you mm-hmm. run out of time and something's messed up, what do you cut or what do you change to a, to today? If you don't have enough time to do your full workout, does that mean you say it wasn't good enough, I can't do it? Or do you just say, fine, I'll just do 10 push-ups to keep the habit because the habit's yeah. more important than the workout. Yep, same with guitar. You need a yeah. backup plan. I pro- On an average day, I would say I play guitar for probably 20 minutes to half an hour at least some days, even more, some days I'll sit in here and play for an hour, but my Habitica does not say practice guitar for 20 minutes. It says practice guitar. So maybe I pick it up and I run through a few arpeggios and I play a few chords and it's like five minutes of practice and then I can't do any more for the day. Okay. That's fine. I yeah. still practiced. And that is, that's the key here. Uh, now from here, I do want to talk about what to do when you do miss a day. Because a lot of people feel like if you miss a day, it's like the worst thing and you failed. Um, But there's actually research to show that missing once does not have a substantial effect on your ability to turn something into a a solid habit. Uh, It's, as we've talked about before, the second mistake. When you allow it to lapse again, that's when you start to fall off. Yeah. And I know we've talked about it before, but I actually want to uh, go over the study that this comes from. So there was a, a study in the European Journal of Social Psychology called How Habits Are Formed, Modeling Habit Formation in Real Time. And uh, they actually had like 96 people do some sort of habit for 12 weeks. And then um, I'm not going to read the entire abstract here. We can link to it in the show notes. But what I do find what I do find very interesting in here was the sentence that said, missing one opportunity to perform the behavior did not materially affect the habit formation process. With repetition, uh, with, with repetition of a behavior in a consistent context, automaticity, it's a fun word, increases following an asymptotic curve, asymptotic wow. curve, which can be modeled at, a, at the individual level. Uh, so to summarize here, the people who missed once, they were fine, as long as they got back on the horse the next day and kept building. So this is the thing that you need to keep in mind. If you miss one day, that's fine. So what? Um, and this is where I've had actual trouble with habit trackers in the past because I get so enamored with that streak on each yeah. habit that if I miss one, I'll just be like, ugh, well, now I'm just dead. Yeah, you know? time to start over from some other habit. Yeah, which I think I think that's actually why Habitica has a spell you can buff yourself with that won't kill your streak. If you miss a day, you'll still damage yourself, but you won't kill the streak. Yeah, well, what if you have a kid and your kid's sick today? Yeah. Don't play guitar for 20 minutes. Take care of your kid. What's wrong with you? Well, you shouldn't lose serenade, points for that. Serenade your kid with guitar. Your kid hates guitar. Oh. They only like lo-fi hip-hop. <laughs> That's probably true at this point. <laughs> I just want that lo-fi chill-hop I mean, study play as dad. Stop playing the Eagles. But, like, yeah, some, sometimes something actually happens. It's a real exception. Yeah. But as soon as you decide the second day not to do it, you've started a reverse habit, the habit of not doing the first habit. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. So now your cue is feeling guilty about the habit, and your routine is not doing it, and your reward is, I don't know, feeling guilty about the habit, <laughs> not having to do it, blaming something else. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not good. Yeah. This week's episode of our show is sponsored by Audible, which since we're talking about morning routines and habits today is one of the apps that factors into my daily routine the most. Audible is the best place in the world to get your hands on audiobooks and other audio products. They have an unmatched library of titles in a ton of different genres, ranging from the best sellers to tons of obscure stuff. So whatever's on your reading list, you can probably listen to it in addition to reading it. And listening to audiobooks is actually a great way to make Uh, your time more efficient. If you are doing laundry, if you're folding clothes, if you're cooking dinner, if you're cleaning your apartment or riding the train or, you know, driving to work, riding your bike somewhere, listening to an audiobook is a great way to use that sort of, you know, time where your attention is sort of unoccupied to learn something new. Now, because you're here on the podcast with me, I thought we would actually shake things up a bit and give two book recommendations. Oh man, how are people going to handle two books? Maybe by listening to both of them. Oh, no. Oh, you're right. That's pretty much it. <laughs> well, so what I wanted to do is uh, my book recommendation is going to be a fiction book. Okay. And because this is kind of like a self-improvement podcast, I think we should also have a nonfiction book to sort of round that out and complete it. 
So the book that I'm going to recommend this week for my part is the complete Sherlock Holmes collection. Because I did that whole Sherlock Holmes video, I've just sort of gotten into it and now I'm listening ah. to it. Now, when you go on Audible, there are at least three full collections of Sherlock Holmes readings, along with lots of other individual Sherlock Holmes readings done by different narrators. And many of the narrators are very good. Uh, David Timpson is very good, though you can't get a full collection of his stories. Um, Simon Vance is very good. But for my money, the great Stephen Fry's collection is the one to get. It is 62 hours of material. That is intense. Yeah, for one credit. So... As far as I've seen, in terms of the sheer amount of content you get, it's like one of the best deals on Audible. Uh, it's definitely the, the most content out of anything that I've ever bought on Audible. It's going to take me a long time to get through it. Wow. Uh, and Stephen Fry's voice, if you've ever heard him on TV or in anything else, his voice is absolutely fantastic. And he really does these stories justice. Um, I have a whole print collection of it that I've been slowly working my way through over the years. But after downloading this... I finished studying Scarlet in like one day, and now I'm already halfway through The Sign of the Four, and it's great. Uh, so that is my recommendation. And what is yours? My recommendation is going to have to be not necessarily it's, – it's not really a book, but it's a collection of graduation ceremony speeches given by Kurt Vonnegut, okay. one, of, uh, one of America's favorite authors, a humanist thinker, and overall a really interesting philosopher of sorts. I've learned a lot just from thinking about how he writes and the sort of positions and issues of morality that he throws into things. Mm. And these graduation speeches are just a really nice way to get some simple wisdoms about life, about all sorts of things. And because they're speeches, they are a particularly good format for an audiobook. Yeah, it's, that's true. It's exactly what the original intention was. And he was speaking them to people. Yeah. Uh, what's the title of that one? If This Isn't Nice, What Is? If This Isn't Nice, What Is? Cool. And for mine, the title is just Sherlock Holmes, and you'll know it is the one that I'm thinking of or that I'm recommending by the uh, narrator listing will be Stephen Fry because there's lots of Sherlock Holmes yeah. narrations on Audible. But, but only that's, one Stephen Fry. That, only one Stephen Fry, and that's definitely the one. So those are two very good recommendations that you can uh, spend your credit on. And what's better if you go over to audible.com slash CIG or text CIG to 500, 500 on your phone, you can actually get a free audiobook download along with a free 30 day trial of their service. So you could get Sherlock Holmes, you could get what's that? If again? this isn't nice, what is? If this isn't nice, what is? Or any other audiobook of your choosing. Once again, that is audible.com slash CIG. That's A U D I B L E dot com slash CIG or text CIG to 500. 500 on your phone. So big thanks to Audible for sponsoring this episode. And for the first time ever, we actually have a second sponsor Whoa. on one episode. Yeah, two we're moving books, up in the world. Two sponsors. Yeah. What kind of world is this? This is uh, it's a pretty cool world. I like it. So this episode is also brought to you by Brilliant, which is a brilliant, pun intended, learning tool for anyone who wants to learn math, science, and computer science. Brilliant takes an extremely active approach to their learning process. So instead of just sitting through boring lectures or sitting through tons of introductory material before you start actually getting your hands dirty, Brilliant is gonna throw you right into the thick of it and give you challenging problems, which will build your interest really quickly, but also give you something to sink your teeth into and actually apply the concepts you're learning to, which is gonna make them stick much better. I am a huge fan of Brilliant's approach to learning and in their course library, you're going to find courses ranging from calculus to probability to logic, science courses ranging from classical mechanics to solar energy and computer science courses ranging from computer science fundamentals with algorithms and sorting things, which I've actually taken myself to computer memory and artificial neural networks and lots of really, really cool stuff. Additionally, if you ever get stuck in a problem, you're going to find an extremely detailed wiki with articles on basically every single concept that is taught within their courses and a huge community with thousands of other learners who are constantly helping each other out and challenging each other. And what's best, you don't just have to use their app on a computer. They have mobile apps for both iOS and iPad, as well as Android devices. So if you want to support this show and start learning for free today, you can head on over to brilliant.org slash college info geek. And the first 87 people who go to that link and sign up are also going to get 20% off of their annual subscription. Once again, brilliant dot org slash college info geek and huge thanks to both brilliant and audible for sponsoring our show this week let's get back into it 
Uh, okay, so I want to ask you, what do you do to incentivize yourself to do the habits on the days when it's difficult? Well, um, let's see. My habits specifically, my morning routine is designed in a very, very motivating way because everything in it is a piece of something that just makes me happy to begin with. Okay. So more or less over the course of a given day, it's not unlikely that I'm building up this this steadily growing level of anxiety and overwhelmingness mm. where I'm getting like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough. So my morning routine is designed to include all of the things that make me feel like I'm doing en enough, like meditation, I'll make a cup of tea, I will read a little, do some language practice and exercise. All of these are in small enough amounts to be manageable before anyone can interrupt me. Okay. But the reward for doing this overall habit is that I've started my day successfully and now the rest of the day, I don't feel bad because I plan the mm. rest of the day according to what it requires and I don't feel behind on books. I don't feel behind on language. Yeah. I feel calm because the meditation and stuff has helped me start the day more patiently. So my reward is is more of like an abstract, this is the way to keep me happy because otherwise mm. the whole rest of the day I'm thinking, oh God, I've got this work to do, but I, I'm so behind on my book, but that doesn't make sense. I should be working. Okay, I'll work, but I'm so behind on the book, but I'm so behind on the work now. Ah, everything is too much. Yeah. And the freedom from that the yeah. freedom from having to think about all the other things I'm behind on is so relieving. So is this like a deliberate affirmation you have to make some mornings? Like, I, I know this is going to make me feel more calm and more accomplished, so I do it? Yeah. It's, it's like, is there ever a time when you wake up and you're just like, I really don't want to exercise? You see, it doesn't, if I don't want to, that is not a good enough reason for me because the thing is, okay. after I've meditated, now I'm happy. Now I'm like, I see why I did that. Mm. Everything makes sense once I've done it. But the only reason that I would cut it, so um, if I if I feel particularly weak, if I've not gotten enough sleep and I can't do the full exercise I wanted, I'll just do a little and I'll accept, okay, that's fine. Or okay. if something special is happening mm -hmm. and I'm running out of time, I'll say, okay, these were 30 minutes and they're 20 today because gotcha. that's better than zero. Yeah. No matter what, I want to do the things to some degree because I've basically picked apart the essence of what makes me happy and fulfilled on an average day right and decided that i will get some of them every day because my best work will come when i start out happy mm. okay so it's not it's not as easy as a specific reward in this case it's a right. really big abstract one yeah i'm just trying to think of a lot of the habits that i have that are not I guess they, they make me feel accomplished afterwards, but they aren't easy. Like needing to write often, that's difficult. Or yeah. going to the gym. I know like your exercise is in the apartment. There's very little excuse for that, for skipping that. Yeah. Because you just, I'm just gonna- That's why I do it in the apartment, apartment because yeah. I would never go to the gym. That would fall apart in three days. And that, that's actually a good point. Like you have anticipated the things that would cause you to fall off the train and you've just removed them and made an exercise routine that doesn't require those things. Yeah. Uh, personally, I go to the gym because like I want to bench and I want to do things that I can't do at home and I don't live in a house so I can't make a home gym. So I kind of have to go to the gym. So. You know, I've been trying to think about like, what are the ways that I incentivize my own behavior when it really is difficult? And it's it's not a case where I can just acknowledge this will make me happy and then that's enough. You know, and I think a lot of it is just like grit and discipline and building that over time. But another thing that I find very helpful is um, assuming the role of an example for others. So, if I'm like, I really don't want to go to the gym, and this is uh, this is a little behind the curtain for the people who follow me on Instagram. Uh, if you see a story of me going to the gym, it's probably because I didn't want to go. And then I was like, you know what? I don't want people following me to skip going to the gym today. So I'm going to make a story of myself going, and maybe it'll motivate mm -hmm. other people to go and not skip. And it will also mean that I'm not skipping. So... And this is also the reason why I am posting a screenshot of my Habitica progress every week on my Instagram story. Because in the past, a lot of the stuff in Habitica, I've been doing it for so long that it's not sufficiently motivating. 
And a lot of times I'll even, I'll do the habits. I just won't keep up on Habitica. But now that I'm posting that screenshot, I'm just like, okay, now I can't, I can't skip anything. So you're building an accountability for each habit. Yeah. And the accountability is part of the reward is you don't have a bunch of people saying, wow, Tom. Well, yeah. So there, nice job. this is twofold. Number one, I don't want to show all my followers that I skipped habits, uh, which actually there was a YouTuber I was watching who called this like a threat bet where there's like a threat if you don't do it. It's very similar to how I told you I'd pay you 100 bucks if I didn't read every yeah. day. It's like a threat bet. Uh, but I also... I don't want to ever skip a day because I don't want to get a hundred DMs from someone being like, Hey, how come that one habit has got a lesser number than the other ones? <laughs> <laughs> it's like almost like I don't want to be hassled. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just like, okay, I'm going to post a screenshot. Every habit is going to have the exact same number of streaks. It's going to be perfect. And I'm going to tag the app. So no one asks me what the app is. Cause if I tag it, they'll be able to click on it. So it's more like, yeah, set a good example. Don't fail in the eyes of my followers. And also don't be hassled with a million questions about my failings. Just don't fail. Yeah. I don't know. That's always been very helpful for me. And I know there's like people out there who say you shouldn't use negative enforcement or you shouldn't use uh, too much external rewards because you get that really like, over justification. Yeah. The over justification effect where, you know, the external rewards actually kill the internal fire that you had to do the thing. But I think that there's no one answer that fits every single thing. And when it comes to certain habits, it is better for me to be accountable to a lot of people publicly and to know that I am essentially being watched. Cause I know that I'm certainly not going to just lie and click things. Even yeah. If I didn't do them, I would feel horrible about myself and it wouldn't matter what other people say or didn't say. Uh, and I don't want people to say bad things about me. So I'm just going to do the things that I have in my Habitica. Yeah, it's a very very discipline focused way yes. to do it, yes, which it is, is interesting because because it's so different from like mine, which is just this is how I know I will live a happy life. Yep. Because these things are the core of what you need, and when you don't do them for several days, you start to question everything, and mm -hmm. everything gets sad, and you feel like everything is pointless, and that's not helpful when there are so such simple things. Yeah. That bring it all back. So I guess one good point to to make here is that there are different philosophies that while seemingly diametrically opposed can lead to the same outcome. Both of us are quite um, consistent with our habits now and both of us are happy. Yeah. You know, I'm not like horribly depressed because I'm putting myself through all this discipline. Yeah. I'm still pretty happy on a day-to-day -day basis, to be honest. Uh, and this is something that um, Jocko Willink talks about a lot. The ex Navy SEAL who's, who's like all about discipline he often gets the same question I get, which is, if you set all these habits and routines for yourself, aren't you becoming a robot? Aren't you becoming just this automaton that has to follow this regimented schedule? Aren't you squashing the human free spirit within you? Um, and his point, which I agree with, is actually, if you have no discipline, you have no obligations, you are a slave to your own short-term based decisions, to your own whims. And those are going to keep you mired in mediocrity forever you know whereas if you build discipline you are operating within a structure but that structure allows you to do so much more so you become free in a different way yeah and i think the assumption that the people that think you're going to become a robot uh, they're they're making this assumption that what are you doing this all day long the, yeah the point of what i'm doing right now is i've got that small amount of structure for the beginning mm -hmm. nothing else in the day is scripted before I decided what I feel like doing today, what work is required. It has yeah. to be flexible the rest of the day. I couldn't have a morning routine like that and then have an after lunch routine and then have an evening routine and be strict on all of them because then I would feel like I was kind of killing my ability to live in the moment. Yeah. Well, yeah. you've told me that you're even time boxing your day. Yeah. Right? But so you're, you're defining chunks of time in which you're going to do something. But within those chunks of time, you are free to execute on that planned work as you see fit. Well, then I execute on it rather than sitting around and saying, which one should I do next? Yeah. Sometimes structure frees you from confusion. And and maybe, I don't know, you know, Loki would say we were meant to be ruled. So <laughs> who knows? Yeah, Loki could be right. He could be know. right. And maybe he meant we need strong habit systems. 
That's what it was. The whole he Avengers movie actually, was about yeah. discipline and structure just so we could reach our best selves. So the Chitari are just actually a metaphor for discipline It's a structure. metaphor for and discipline And the Avengers structure. are actually the bad guys. Yeah, they're the lazy the of the parts day. of us that yeah. don't want to try very hard. They're fighting against. And in that movie, they actually won, which was bad, you know? Yep. <laughs> this is now uh, a fanfic. Okay. Alternative. But I expect yeah, you to write sometimes that by the a end little of the week. bit of structure. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of structure is is better than none. If you're not going to be able to function well in none. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and the the big thing is if you have no structure ever, and you're not making progress, eventually you're going to get to a point where somebody else is dictating your life for you. Maybe not all of it. Maybe you have a little bit of free time, but you're not going to build a life where you have say over the the you know the course of it. Yeah. You're not going to have a ton of autonomy because if you're unable to become disciplined, you're unable to to get to that point where you have a lot more freedom. You're going to have to go get a job where somebody essentially creates the structure for you and tells you what to do. That's not freedom. Yeah, or you'll be so sick that you're bedridden because you never exercised or ate right. Yeah. And maybe that exercise routine would have given you the freedom to, I don't know, walk around and enjoy yourself 40 mm-hmm. or 50 years from now. I want that freedom. So yeah. if I have to put in a little bit of work to have it, that's better than saying, ha ha, I get to be lazy now. Yeah, so I guess the question is, are you going to become disciplined and structure your own life for yourself or are you going to allow someone to structure it for you? I don't know if most of humanity has a third option. Yeah, we don't Maybe live in like... Very privileged people do, but yeah, I don't, most I of don't us know. don't. Even if we lived in the jungle, you know, if I don't have the discipline to look for food, then starving will force me to do it later. Yeah. So even us, like at, at the point we're at right now, we could probably throw away all structure, throw away all schedules and discipline, and we could probably just sit around playing games. Yeah, we could coast for a little bit. We could coast for a little bit, uh, but eventually the money would run out and then we would be like, oh no, we've let everything we built go to waste and everyone's gone and moved on to other things. And our only option now is to go get a job and let somebody else dictate our structure, you know? And I don't want to say that, you know, having a job and being employed rather than being self-employed is is a bad thing. Oh, no, it's not bad. You can you can be an employee and you can be an employee who gains autonomy by proving that you have discipline and you have the ability to operate really well within the structure of an organization without an without a manager like breathing down your neck and micromanaging you. So there's a lot of autonomy and independence to be gained even within an organization, even as an employee. It's just a mindset thing. Yeah. You know, so don't think I'm trying to say never have a job or you got to quit and be an entrepreneur. If you want to, that's great. But there's a lot of this can be that can be executed on as an employee. So to round this episode out, um, I know both you and I use habit trackers. At least I know you have in the past. Are you now? Right now I'm using my time blocked uh, morning routine. Okay, so you oh so, so, so you I took are the same stuff out of Habitica. A journal. Okay, and like I I was using Habitica, I was liking it, but then when I came back from traveling, it wasn't as motivating. And also, mm-hmm. I basically have everything in it, and, and <laughs> I was just like, I don't know what to do next. Yeah. So I took the same habits from there, the same morning routine, more or less, and I just. I write down every night, I write out the beginning part of my next day, which is just the morning routine. So okay. I'm keeping track of it by checking off those boxes in my notebook. So do you are you only tracking morning routine habits? Is that it? Yep. Like there's no go to bed on time, get enough sleep or anything like that? No, I have t- I would like to go to bed on time. I have a goal for that. I have okay. an alarm that goes off an hour before that's like, hey, the last call for doing stuff. So you do have that. Okay. But If I don't listen to it, I don't listen to it. I give myself the freedom to make those extra mistakes because Mm. they're less important to me than keeping the morning routine going. Okay. If you got to make a sacrifice, which one will you make? And I need to read and meditate and stuff because it centers me and helps me stay less stressed so I do better work. Okay. I do have a bet on go to bed on time habit uh, because I'm very prone to ignore that, that alarm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The wind down routine is hard for me to to come to terms with. So I have to have a habit for it. Otherwise, I'll start compromising on sleep. And, you know, the video we made or we're going to make today 
There's that whole point about thinking you're the exception. Yeah. Like thinking, oh, I, I'm the one person who can sleep four hours and instead of seven or eight. Like, I'll be fine. No. Uh, and I have to tell myself, like, as much as you think you can convince yourself that that's the case, it's not. So I've got a go to bed on time habit. Online. That's fair. So you are not using an app right now, it seems. You're just using a paper journal. And I guess to describe, can I see the page again, actually? Or just any any of them. Let me find one. Okay. So there is. Okay, so you have a time block. Yeah. So I've time blocked. So on the left side of the page, you've written like five, six, seven. So like five a.m. So I wake up at five thirty. Okay. So my first thing starts there. Yeah. And then you've just got check boxes going down the page, kind of lined up with those hours that just list out your morning routine. Yep. Okay. So and everything is at least a half hour because it's a grid notebook. Mm. Nothing is more specific than that because that gives me a little bit of buffer time. Oh, okay. Interesting. If I were to have eight things that all took 15 minutes, I would probably mess around on a couple of them and then end up running out of time. So yeah. I just, everything's at least a half hour. Interesting. Okay, cool. So yeah, there's a journalistic way you could do that on paper if you wanted to. Um, there are also lots of habit trackers out there that both of us have used. So there's, let's see here, Momentum is one. Yep. And I'm going to talk about Habitica, but that's, that's the one that I use, and it's also a very involved one. So I do want to mention a few simpler options first. So Momentum, that is for iOS, I think, only. Yep. There's Habit Bull, which is Android. Um, there is... What? There was like a Today one. Today, that's what it's called. Yeah, it's just called Today. And we'll link to it in the show notes because I feel like if you just put today, that's ambiguous. it's yeah. very, yeah, it's very ambiguous. Maybe if you put today habit tracker, you'd find it. Uh, I think that one's iPhone only. And then there's, there's another one people always send to me and I never remember the name that's for Android. Uh, so I'll see if I can find it for the show notes. If not, I guarantee it's going to be in the comments on the YouTube version of this episode. People are always sending it to me. Uh, I'm just very much brain farting on it right now. But the one that we use, or I guess that I use and you have used, uh, that Anna uses, is called Habitica, which is a gamified habit tracker that is basically like an RPG. So what do you do? You, get, you go on quests. You can party up with other people. Yeah, you can get pets and mounts and armor and all sorts of stuff. S- special hats and hair colors and... Uh, yeah, so basically, like when you when you get the app, there's there's a habits column, there's a dailies column, and there's a to do column. So habits are basically habits that you can do as many times as you want. So like, yeah, they're I not know, strict habits. Do they're a pull just up, like get and it, yeah points. And there can be negative and positive habits. So if you created one that was like smoke a cigarette as a bad habit, then if you checked it because you did one, you would lose health. Uh, but if it was a positive one, like eat a carrot. You could do that as many times as you want in a day and you would gain experience and gain gold. I personally do not use the habits column. I only use the dailies column. And that is because I just sort of want like a routine of habits that I go through during the day. And actually I should just pull it up so I can tell people what's on it. Uh, That's Instagram, not Habitica. My thumb is kind of fat. Sorry, I fat shamed you thumb. I'm sorry about that. Oh, no. <laughs> so I have wake up on time, uh, read for 20 minutes. And the reason I wake up on time is because I don't get up at the exact same time on the weekends. Um, so it's just on time. And I know what on time is. Six o'clock during the day or the weekdays and seven on the weekends. All right. Roughly. Uh, read for 20 minutes. Take care of my plants because I got to take care of that money tree. Do some sort of exercise. So three times a week, this is the gym. Uh, or it might be riding my bike, it might be playing basketball or DDR, could be skateboarding, anything that goes out and gets my heart rate up and makes me sweat. Practice guitar, drink one bottle of water. I usually drink more between tea and coffee and everything, but as long as I drink that one bottle of water, I'm good, and then be in bed on time. Okay. That's it. I don't use the to-dos column because I use Todoist or Asana for to-dos. So really it's just log in, check my dailies off. That's it. Um, there's a lot more you can do in the game. You can, like you said, get gear and pets and mounts and all kinds of stuff. My favorite part of the game though, is the fact that you can party up with other people. And when you're in a party, you can go on quests where you'll fight monsters and things like that. 
And the best thing is, if you don't do your habits, you will take damage, but so will your party members. Yeah. And I think this goes back to the accountability thing. Like, you don't want to make your party members die. Because when you die, you lose a level and you lose a piece of gear. And uh, I remember when we first were doing this, you and I were in a party and I was like deathly afraid of ever skipping a habit because I didn't want you to have to lose gear because I knew I would hear about it. No, oh, it's one thing. <laughs> it's one thing to let yourself down. Mm -hmm. It's like harder to let somebody else down because not only have you let somebody else down, but it's more public. Somebody else has to yes. know by default. Yep. It's public. And the fact that someone is in a party with you means that they're sort of invested in your success. So I think this kind of goes back to the whole telling people about your goals casually thing. You know, I think in the case of like Instagram, I know I'm going to get hounded by somebody if I publicly show my goals and then I publicly show failure if it happens. But if I'm just like to one of my friends who doesn't really care, hey, I'm going to do this cool thing, you know, that it's not helpful because they're just going to be like, yeah, right on, man. That's awesome. But if you're yeah. in a Habitica party with me, not only are you invested in my success, you're going to be angry if I fail because I will hurt you. Yeah. And they'll know that you yes. failed. Whereas normally you might just not talk about your goal for a few days. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that's why I like Habitica and there's a lot more to it. And if anyone is interested in joining the app, uh, we do have a guild on the app called College Info Geeks. I think it's like the seventh biggest guild in the game now. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's gotten pretty big. I think it has 20,000 people in it, which is pretty insane. Actually, weirdly, the CIG Habitica guild is like, the third biggest CIG anything. Yeah, it's really big. Next to the YouTube channel and the email that's list. That's pretty good. No, I guess I have more Instagram and Twitter followers, but still, it's, it's a lot of people in that guild. Uh, so you can go in there. That'd be a great place to find party members, find people who might want to be in an accountability group with you, all sorts of stuff like that. Um, but otherwise, do, I think we covered most of it. Oh, you know what we didn't cover uh, was the 22nd rule. And I know we've talked about this in other podcasts, but I think it warrants a mention here. So if you want to have a good habit and you want to build it and you want to get you know more consistent with it, like you did with your workouts, lower the time it takes or the effort it takes to get yourself into the behavior. So even if you wanted to say, you know, do a hard workout, what could you do that makes it easier to get there? Maybe lay, like laying out your gym clothes the night before or signing up for a gym that's way closer than the one that you're currently going to yeah. or using the gym inside your apartment building. Just like make it less inconvenient to do the thing you want to do and you're going to have way less of an excuse to skip. And conversely, if you want to stop doing something, like we said, take the junk food out of the house, make it harder, make it less convenient to do that thing. And eventually, the by the law of least resistance, you're not going to do it, even if you want to. Yeah. You know, if the chocolate is 20 minutes away, that's probably enough time for the craving to subside. Uh, cool. So I know habits is a really big topic. So if you guys have questions and you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook, uh, you can leave comments and those will help us to develop future episodes. Otherwise, um, Tom Frankly on Twitter or Yo Martholomew on Twitter or Instagram or on both of those, send us your questions and we will try to get them answered and use them to create newer and better episodes in the future. Uh, last but not least, you can find our show notes for this episode at cigpodcast.com slash 214. I'm going to try to have my notes for the power of habit linked up in there as well as the apps we mentioned here. Um, and I also do recommend reading the power of habit. It's a very good book. It's one of my favorites. It's on our essential books list, which actually before I forget, collegeinfogeek.com slash resources is where you can find our essential books list, our college packing list, as well as our favorite apps and lots of other cool gear and tools for students. So check that out. And I think that's about it, right? That's about as much as I can think of. That's my spiel. Yeah, I did it. All right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and listening and or watching, whichever it is that you did. And we will see you in next week's episode. Thank you. That clap rhythm lined up perfectly with the Thomas the Tank Engine song. I just want you to know. Da, 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 da. Yeah, just... <laughs>
Actually, I feel like I'm trying to like play Thomas the Tank Engine in my head, and I just keep getting well, Super Mario Bros. Three. Oh no! Well, see, I was thinking of Boo Boo Choo Choo. Don't be afraid of the dark. It's oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know niche Thomas the Tank Engine okay. songs. 